Wayfinder is a brand new upcoming MMORPG in which players explore a stylized instance fantasy world and take on the role of a character known as a Wayfinder. Each Wayfinder has their own unique abilities and they can each be equipped with any weapon of your choosing. In this game you'll spawn into the hub area known as Skylight. This is where most players will hang out, craft gear, take on new quests and step through the giant gloom gates to embark on dungeons. If I was to describe Wayfinder to someone, I'd say it's an instanced PvE MMO light that's designed similar to Warframe. Dungeons are designed for party sizes of 3, there's also open world zones to explore with more traditional feeling MMO quests, a main storyline and world events. Wayfinder uses an action combat system, and upon release will have many things for players to collect, such as different appearances for Wayfinders, mounts, echoes to improve your stats, and furniture for player housing. The following recording was done during the game's closed beta test, and everything you see in this video is subject to change. So take what you see with a pinch of salt. But first, sponsor. Everlegion is a 3D idol RPG hero collect with over 100 unique heroes across 7 different factions. This game's completely free to play, receives regular updates, and it's the perfect game to play stress free anytime, anywhere. You'll also receive 25 free summons just by completing the tutorial, and the first 100 players using my code ELLAZYPEON get epic rewards. Character models in Everlegion are highly detailed, and each character has their own unique story, battle effects, and abilities. My personal favourite is Garzak, a huge undead warrior with a Mortal Kombat style ultimate ability called Fed by Fury. Everlegion is also a game with tons of different game modes, such as the roguelike Spirit Realm, an instanced dungeon called Sky Tower, and a war game mode, Isle of Mists, each offering a unique experience with different buffs, rewards, and epic bosses to challenge. Building an effective team comp is crucial to success in Everlegion, as you get 25% bonus damage with factional advantages. For example, Elves counter Undead, Humans counter Orcs, the Deva and Yuda counter each other, and the Elementals protect everyone. In Everlegion, you earn offline rewards whilst AFK, which also makes it a super friendly game to free to play players. So make sure you check out Everlegion using my link in the description below, and the first 100 players to use code E. L Lazy Peon will get legendary rewards. Start your adventure in this epic new idol RPG today. Download now. Here we are in the Wayfinder closed beta. Let's see what this game's all about. So starting out, I get to select a character: Wingrave, Silo, or Nis. Straight away, he looks like the coolest, but also more of a tank. Nis looks like more of an assassin DPS. So let's actually be her. So this is the intro cutscene, giving us a bit of story, and we're in the game: Heart of Darkness. Controls: I can double jump. Shift is sprint. Control is blink. Left click is attack. I've got a number one ability. Number two ability, number three ability. And so far the combat and movement seems pretty smooth and fluid. Seems like each character's got their own intro cutscene and starting experience. Interesting that they've decided to go with the approach of you playing as a character rather than making your own character. I'm guessing there's lots of different characters that you can unlock. You can do heavy attacks with E. Right click is parry. Nice. Quite an interesting art style. It's hyper stylized, but it does look really good. It's an art style that I think would be quite popular. And a boss gets summoned. Hopefully it's good to test the combat out on. Ultimate ability. So number four is ultimate ability. Let's try it. What did that actually do? Got my E ability, big damage, dodge through him, three ability, and he's dead. So this is Skylight, the hub area where all the players hang out. Some other players over there. Let's explore Skylight a little bit. This is quite a big tavern. Nice place to hang out. It'd be cool if in this tavern you could sit down with other players and play board games or something. Or if there was like cozy tavern activities that you could do. Maybe have uh, like drinking competitions, have a bunch of emotes. I like MMOs with big taverns. Big social areas where all of the players like hang out and role play. It's pretty cool. Take our first quest. Then we're going to go through the, what is it, Gloom Gate. The layout and the creatures within it may change. So this is where the procedural dungeon aspect of this game comes into play. I guess we just make our way through this dungeon. Wait, he's inside the statue. Get out of there. Got him. <laughs> Beta, no problem. So what's this? Oh, that's a signal fire, so I can use this to fast travel. Got some treasure chests to open. Smash all of these, get various loot. I'm assuming it's for crafting. Oh, accessory found. Bracelet. 
Nice. Should we equip it? Bracer. Okay. This is clearly the boss room. Is a big boy gonna pop out? No various small boys. Big damage. Dodge back through them. Nice. Okay, no boss this time. Expedition complete. And you get bonus rewards based on how much you explore, I guess. Also tells you all of the loot that you collected. You've got stats such as completion time. And we go back to town. I like this character because she Naruto runs. Everyone knows that Naruto running makes you go 60% faster. Exploring the city. Quite a nice hub area, to be honest. Quite big. We've just traveled to the highlands and wow, this is quite the vibrant zone, isn't it? I love the colors of this zone. Look at the art style as well. The game has this vibrant stylized art style, but it's detailed stylized. And it's got all of these nice particle effects in the distance. Trees are swaying. Visually, this looks like a next gen stylized MMO. So this area here isn't a dungeon. It's like an open world area that I'm exploring. Big damage or... I love that ability. Ooh. So far, so good with the combat. Yeah, I think people are really going to like the art style of this game. Visually, this game actually looks exactly how I would expect the Riot MMORPG to look. So I can do this with other players or I can proceed solo. Let's do it solo. Let's explore. This one seems a lot less linear. Oh, you've got traps. Okay, Mr. Trap. What's this? Clearly a puzzle chest. Oh, I see it. It literally tells me the shape it wants me to make. And it's opened. Kind of cool. Yeah, so these dungeons aren't all linear. There's like multiple branching paths. And this one's even got like a little quest objective here. Monsters dead, accessory found. I got three trickster keys. End the expedition. I just realized, but this skylight area actually has an active day night cycle. That's nice. It looks so much better during the daytime. Broodmother gloom trace. So I'm going to use this to hunt down the boss. Recommended party size two out of three. Okay, I'm happy to queue with some other people. Testing, testing. Now I'm in a group with this person. Hopefully this game doesn't have open mic by default that would be a disaster oh my god another cringe youtuber making a first impressions video relax donald he's just trying to get his bread the brood mother so this is our first real boss we need to kill the ads ads are dead now we can attack the boss the boss actually has mechanics it's now jumped on the roof feels like my character is doing pretty good damage oh that hurt he'll finish it and it's dead level five and our first boss is down bunch of loot it was relatively fun i guess like the combat is a bit basic that's all i'm thinking at this point i don't know if i could play this game for 100 hours and still be entertained by the combat it does seem quite simple maybe there's more depth to it later on okay so we do codex halls once again but this time we imbue it so this puts a mutator on the dungeon essentially I can also put a sphere on it too. Sphere makes it more difficult. All enemies are empowered by the gloom. At half health, they enrage, hitting harder. When they die, they explode in a deadly burst. Okay, so there's like clearly more particle effects. The monsters look more menacing. Got my ulti. Big damage. Oh, that was a mimic. Okay. I had a feeling that chest looked a little bit sus. The developers haven't announced that the game's going to be on mobile at all, but if you look at the UI, it does look like a mobile game's UI. It feels like mobile RPG combat. It just doesn't feel there's enough depth or uh, satisfaction to the combat in this game, and those are my early impressions. It's a bit of a concern that I'm feeling that way so early into the game. Now should be the moment where the novelty hasn't worn off. Everything's new and exciting. That's how I feel personally. So maybe other people will love this. I feel like I've seen the entire game within the first two hours of gameplay. All that's really going to be different is just different expeditions, higher damage numbers, and a bit of a gear treadmill. Let's head over to character recruitment and see if we can change our character. Silo, unable to summon. Right, so now I see what these memory fragments are used for. They're used for unlocking other characters. I don't actually have enough resources to unlock another character just yet. So initially, you're kind of stuck with the character that you choose at the start of the game. But later on, as you gather more and more resources, you can unlock other characters. I don't actually like that you play as a hero in this game. I'd much prefer it if you could just create your own character. For example, I really like this character's abilities. However, I don't want to play as an edgy female who looks like she's from V Rising. But I'm kind of stuck looking like this. Yes, I can change her outfit and make a few adjustments, but I'm still a vampire edgelord at the end of the day. But it is what it is. Expedition started. Hunt. So these hunt missions are where you go. Hunt a boss. 
There's not a lot of treasure or exploration in these. Let's see what this boss is like. It's a slime monster. Open up with this. Dodge that. Oh, dodge out of that. Pop a heal. Oh, it's broken. Big damage. Oh, there's the crits. I might be dead here. Oi! Okay, it got me. I uh, used my dodges too much. Got a little bit of complacence. Let's see what happens when you die. I'm guessing you get a certain amount of deaths and then it just fails completely. Okay, it should be broken soon. There it is. It's broken. Pop damage. Zip in and finish it off. Good fight. Okay, not a bad boss. Oh, wait. It's not over. There's a phase two. Wait, I think I need to kill these slime balls. If not, it's just going to respawn. Oh, shit. <laughs> Perhaps I underestimated this boss. Oh, different mechanics now. We're off to actually uh, iframe his jumps now. Okay, we've killed him again. So this time we need to kill the slimes. God, I'm panicking. Kill the bloody slimes. Okay, there's one. I'm doing a terrible job of this. <laughs> this boss would be so much easier in a group, so you can spread out. I'm hardly getting him down. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Big damage. And is it dead? It's got to be dead, surely. Yeah, there it is. Quite a well-designed fight, to be fair. Level 8 weapons. Level 7 character. Bunch of loot. GG. Destroy the Dark Star Meteor. So this is like a world event. Destroying this thing. Spawns a bunch of monsters as well. Oh, another player's come to help. That's nice. There we go. We killed it together. Oh, and it's some of the boss. Dark Star Harbor now. Oh, that deals some damage. Let's uh, get away and heal. And it's dead. Bunch of loot explodes. And that's a world event. Cool. I guess that's the first MMO feeling content I've done so far. The other stuff's just felt like uh, instanced dungeon crawler. Oh, I can upgrade some abilities now. Nice. Okay. My best ability is definitely Shadow Step. Oh, what's this? Okay, I've unlocked another character, Senja. And now that I've switched characters, my character level is back to level one. Senja comes with the giant typhoon axe. When I switch to Senja, she has different abilities, so each characters have their own abilities. However, each character can also use any weapon. Got all of our upgrades, now I've unlocked the Undercroft. Let's go there. New dungeon, and visually I like the look of this one. Almost like an arcane archive type of vibe to it. So even though you go into a new expedition, a lot of these expeditions do have the exact same puzzles that you've done in other expeditions. They're not completely fresh. Sometimes the camera gets a little bit dodgy when you're fighting against the walls. God, I hate it when you dodge into a wall and this happens to the camera where it's like super zoomed in and you can't see what's happening. The game does kind of feel a bit claustrophobic since you're constantly just going through these tight spaces, these enclosed areas. And the novelty of everything just wears off so quickly. We've got another Nis character to play with. I think this is one thing that people aren't going to like about the game. When they get into a group and there's three characters that are basically exactly the same as them. Just different clothes. You don't really feel a connection to your character in this game. And that is the issue of going with the whole character system over creating your own character. Let's see if the final boss for this one's any different or if it's just waves of mobs again. And the same boss I've fought before. Same mini boss I fought in the pit expedition I think. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Been playing for a fair few hours and from what I can tell the gameplay doesn't change at all as you level up. The only thing leveling up and progressing seems to do is just give you passive points to put into your abilities to make them stronger but it doesn't really change the gameplay. And after running through the expeditions and seeing the exact same puzzles, the exact same assets just in different order due to the procedural generation I'm really suffering from visual burnout right now, so to be perfectly honest, I actually don't want to play any more of the game. So yeah, we'll wrap it up here. So after checking out Wayfinder for the closed beta, here's some thoughts. Once again, bear in mind this was a closed beta test, and some things will likely change before full release. The biggest thing I liked about Wayfinder were the stylized graphics. As far as a stylized art style goes, this was probably the nicest I've seen so far pretty much what you'd expect from a next-gen MMORPG. Some of the boss fights in Wayfinder seem to be pretty well designed and have some interesting mechanics, whilst also being soloable if you play correctly. I like that the game will have collection content upon full release such as player housing furniture, mounts, skins and so on. I think the echoes that drop from different monsters are pretty interesting and gives you a reason to do dungeons on harder difficulties to farm echoes to give you your desired stats. Even though you play as a Wayfinder and not your own unique character, it's cool that you can at least use multiple weapons on each Wayfinder. 
Personally, I just don't think the combat and movement in this game is good enough. These heavily instanced MMO light games, such as Warframe, Vindictus, Lost Ark and so on, only work if the combat is top tier. The combat in Wayfinder is B tier at best, with the movement being C tier. It just doesn't feel overly engaging, impactful or satisfying to kill things with your character or move from point A to point B. This for me is a fundamental flaw in the game's core design, and the only reason I can think of for the combat lacking depth is that the game might be being designed cross-platform for mobile in the future, which is unconfirmed by the way. I think many people will hate that you have to play as a Wayfinder rather than create your own character and choose a class. Apparently the reason for this is due to the game intending to be heavily story driven, but personally I think it's way more important for players to have a connection to their character. For example, I didn't actually want to play as a vampire girl, but I didn't have the choice if I wanted to use her assassin style abilities. This will put many people off the game right off the bat in my opinion. Despite the dungeons being randomly generated with various puzzles, mini bosses, and treasures, I didn't actually enjoy traversing or exploring any of these levels, and it felt like once I ran a dungeon once or twice, I'd seen all there was to see regardless of the randomness the next time I entered. Each of these levels also felt kinda claustrophobic and samey to me. Overall, I actually didn't enjoy my time with Wayfinder too much, I got bored playing it extremely quickly, and I think the game has some fundamental issues it needs to address for it to stand a chance at long term success. Here's what I think the devs need to do to make this game successful. Number 1. Make a top tier combat system that's insanely fun, addictive and has a lot of depth. Number 2. Make the general movement feel more fun. Number 3. Make killing monsters more satisfying. This can be done via better audiovisual feedback such as ragdoll physics, decapitated limbs, blood, camera shake and so on. Number 4. Allow players to create their own characters and choose a class rather than play as a wayfinder. But those are just my opinions and maybe I'm wrong, maybe other people will absolutely love this game. If this was a mobile game, I'd probably be saying something along the lines of, it's really good by mobile standards, even though there are multiple mobile games out there that still have better combat than Wayfinder. I hope the devs improve this game and I hope it does well because more successful MMORPGs is always good for the genre, but unless there's some fundamental changes though, I wouldn't get my hopes up too high with this one. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on Wayfinder in the comments below, is this an MMORPG you're excited for, what improvements would you like to see made to the game? Help us out with a like for the algorithm gods, social media on screen, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.